Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the day, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that you are in this place today, Lord God, that you are with each and every one of us, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit dwells with us today, Lord God, and that we are inspired by what we hear and see today, Lord God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Goshen Church. It is time to greet each other, but before we do, do we have any visitors? If so, would you please stand? Any visitors? If so, would you please stand? <laughs> Amen. We want to thank you for coming, and please enjoy today's service. Afterward, we'll have a potluck, and we hope you stay. Happy Sabbath, Church.
Good morning. Well, you can do better than that. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, and it's good to see you here this morning. I am so grateful for the blessings that God has bestowed upon us during this week. Yeah, both of you look like you have been blessed this week. There is violence all around the world. God is good because he's keeping our family members. Ella Ferguson was sharing this morning that his niece was in that building. And we praise God that he had his hands all over her. We're, we're living in a crucial time, my brothers and sisters, and if, we, if you don't know that Jesus is coming soon, really, if you don't believe that Jesus is coming soon, you better take a little more inventory and look around and know that Jesus is coming soon. My son said to me last night, he said, uh, I think something about when he gets to be, live to be 50 years old. And I said, I, I don't think that we're going to see that 50 more years in this world. I don't know when Jesus is coming, but you look around at things that's happening and you know that it is eminent that his coming is, is, is eminent. So we just, for every breath, for every moment that you have to praise God, that's what you ought to be doing. Amen. Amen. It's good to see Sister Austin back with us. After a long illness, God has been good to her and God has been keeping her. So I'm so glad, Sister Austin, to see you here uh, this week. Aim to God be the glory for great things he had done. And all the visitors, we're glad that you are here with us today, worshiping with us, worshiping in spirit and in truth. Now, board members, I want to call your attention to something that is very important. On this, that, next, next Sunday, the 13th of uh, December, we'll have a very, a very important board meeting. It's going to be a working board meeting where we'll try to set the calendar for the year. And we'll set the calendar so all board members need to come with your plans for the year. Uh, your plans need to be evangelistic in, in, in nature. That we as a church, we're going to go where God said to go to meet the people where they're at. So make, make your plans. Come to, let's come together next Sunday and let's plot our calendars. Because when the calendar is set. Then we'll bring it to the church two weeks prior for a vote, and we will vote on the calendar, on the church's calendar. At that point in time, we all of us will agree that that's what we want to do, and we will move ahead in, in our next year. I am excited about 2016. I don't know why I'm excited. It's not here yet, but I'm just excited about what God is going to do through us uh, next year, he's done a mighty work through us this year, you know. And so, uh, to know how we're doing and how you're doing spiritually, you have in your hands, and we've done it before. Uh, but I don't, I didn't get a full number. So, if you did it before the last time, please take a moment and do it again. It's a spiritual life inventory. It is so that. We know that every area of, our, of your life spiritually, we're reaching those areas, and we can plan to make sure that those areas are being met in your spiritual life. The ushers have passed out some, and uh, they're, so just take a moment, please. We, I need at least 60 to 75 percent of the church family to fill this out. It's not a long, it's seven simple questions. You know, it talks about you being spiritually fed uh, on Sabbath. Now, 
if 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 you're definitely not, you then you go to the lower side of the numbers. But so you use the numbers as a trajectory as to how you feel you, your spiritual life or whether you're in Bible studies or whether you whatever it is. And if you definitely yes, you go to the higher number ten. So it's either any just one of those numbers you need to, to you need to circle as to how you feel you're doing and how you, you your Bible study. Um, if spiritual problem arise, can you feel that you could go to someone in the congregation and uh, and you could get that help? So if that if you feel strongly about that, you put a ten. If you feel a little less, you put a nine. If you feel, uh, you know, no way I can ha that can happen, you just go put a one. So just t please take a moment and fill that out for us uh, and, and turn it back to the ushers. We want to make sure that we get a full participation. The only thing, the one thing I'm going to ask you, do not write your name. Don't need your name on this. All I need you to do at the top is just write your age on the top of it. Just your age. Don't need your name. Okay? Uh, everybody clear on that? So we can, we can have that done. As you worship today, we have, we have a guest speaker with us. And he's going to bless. And next week, I will continue the series that I started. I'm so glad that God has provided him to step in. Because I, I have been under the weather for the week and still dealing with whatever I'm dealing with. But uh, just keep praying for me and uh, keep praying for us as we move forward in God by God's grace. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. As the pastor said, we are so blessed to be here today. How lovely is thy dwelling place, O, o Lord of hosts. Amen, amen. My soul longs, yea, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrows find a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at thy altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Amen. Blessed are those who dwell in thy house, yes. ever singing thy praise. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand yes. elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God yes. than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Amen. For the Amen. Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. Amen, amen. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in thee. Amen. You have amen. been called to worship. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we all stand for praise and worship? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise. Honor and glory. Believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
of the sun. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. To the going down Mercy. of the sun. How many of you know that he's worthy? Yes. Hey. From the rising of the sun, the rising of the sun to the going down, to the going down of the same. Let everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. And all 
that is within me. And all that is within me, bless its name. From the rising, from the rising of the sun, to the going down. To the Now lift your voice and sing hallelujah. To the going down, to the going down, going down of the sand. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Yes, yes. From the rising, from the rising of the sun, to the going down, to the going down of the let everything, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From the rising, from the rising, from the rising of the sun, head to the going down. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. touch our hearts, our minds, our spirits, Father God, and let everything in us, Lord, today praise you and glorify your yes, name. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You may be seated for a moment. I just want to make one interjection here that I forget to talk about. Our 40 days of prayer has started and make sure, please make sure that you have, you've received a book. I think we still have some more, but this afternoon at four o'clock, we want to get together in our group. So we want you to come back. We want you to be a part of the group as we discuss, and we have our corporate time of prayer. So I just want to make sure our 40 days of prayer does everybody receive their book? Everybody at least get your part prayer partner. If you don't have your book, this is a very crucial book. It's a very crucial reading. So I want to encourage you 
to get one. Uh, see, Sister Ferguson, she's, I think we still have a few books left. So please, please get your book, even if you don't have the necessary finances at the moment for it. We want to encourage you to get one, and we will make sure that we can all start together on studying the book. So may God bless you. So amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing, so amazing. You cause the sun, the sun and moon to shine. I'm so glad you're mine. I'm so glad to say you're mine. We stand, we stand in all of you. So amazed at the things you do. Somebody say, Oh, holy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain for me. Say, We stand in all of you. So amazed at everything you do. Somebody say, Show you. 
Think about what he's done for you this week and say, so amazing. Mm. Hallelujah. Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes Lord. Lord. My God.
I have something I want to read to you before we uh, start our prayer today. Uh, it's from the book, In Living the Life of the Life Giver. And chapter 9 is uh, The Pearl. There are some who seem to be always seeking for the heavenly pearl. But they do not make an entire surrender of their wrong habits. They do not die to self that Christ may live in them. Therefore, they do not find the precious pearl. They have not overcome unholy ambition and their love for the worldly attractions. They do not take up the cross and follow Christ in the path of self-denial and sacrifice. Almost Christians, yet not fully Christians. They seem near the kingdom of heaven, but they cannot enter there. Almost, almost, but not wholly saved. Means to be. Not almost, but wholly lost. I want to invite you up to prayer. Uh, if you want to kneel, if you want to come down and just stand and bow your heads, I just want to invite you up so we can pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that there's still opportunity on this earth, Lord God, to be saved. We pray, Lord God, that you help us to be full Christians and surrender to you, Lord God. Not to half do it, Lord God, but to fully do it, Lord God, and to surrender to you, Lord God, so that we might be in samples to you, Lord God. Help us to see, Lord God. Help us to see our errors, Lord God, and to see our sin. Make that thing clear to us, Lord God, so that we can make a, a clear choice for you and turn away from those things, Lord God. Help all in this church to do such a thing, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you just help the leaders of Goshen, Lord God. Help the pastor. Help the elders, Lord God. Help the ministry leaders, help the choir, help the musicians. Help them, Lord God, to have a relationship with you, Lord God. Because all of this, Lord God, is for naught if we don't turn away with you, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, that you just help us in seeing that. Father God, we, we pray, Lord God, for the sick and the shut-in, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, because we can't do anything, Lord God, to heal their sickness, Lord God. We come 100% to you, Lord God, that you intervene in their lives, Lord God, and that you heal and make them better, Lord God, so that they will have a testimony and more confidence, Lord God, that you are who you say you are, Lord God that they will know that thing, Lord God, and they will seek through all their troubles straight to you, Lord God. They won't say, maybe we should pray, Lord God. They won't say, well, we could just pray, Lord God. Maybe they'll just say, God, I'll pray. And that'll be the first thing they do, Lord God. They won't make a call first. They won't, they won't text someone. They'll come straight to you. Because you are the answer, Lord God. And we pray you make that clear to them, Lord God, through their sickness and healing, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you are with us as we plan for 2016. We pray, Lord God, because there are different ministry leaders here, Lord God. There's the pastor, there's the elders, and we're all planning things, Lord God, for 2016. But we lay those things at your feet. Yes. 
Whatever it is, we lay that thing at your feet and we ask that you scribble all through those plans, Lord God, that they might be your plans, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you make them clear to us, Lord God, so that we might do what you have called us to do, to reach those people, Lord God, in Chatham and around us, Lord God. Be with us, Lord God, to do such a thing. Father God, we pray for the speaker of the hour, Lord God, that you are with him, Lord God. Give him something in addition to what he's already studied to give us, Lord God. Give him something extra, Lord God. Reveal something to those that listen. Reveal something that he might not even have planned for us to see, Lord God. But that it all, Lord God, leads to you. In closing, Lord God, I just want to quote the scripture for all those that are listening. Uh, Psalm 100, 4 through 5. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Be with us here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. like for all the children to come forward for a children's story. <laughs> Boys and girls, Make sure you say thank you.
Thank you. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. I want to thank your mom and dad, your grandpa, your grandmom, or your uncle, your aunt, your big brother, big sister, whoever brought you to church today. I just want to thank them for bringing you. Okay? Um, I'd like to read a story to you. Uh, it's about a little boy named Bobby. He's growing up, and it's something that he learned on his birthday. Okay? Do you have on your listening ears? Let me see. Okay. All right, Bobby was excited. Today promised to be a busy, fun-filled day. Mom was off from work, and earlier this morning, she had made him his favorite breakfast. Later this afternoon, several of his friends were coming over to play. Mom had made a cake. It was his birthday. But first, he and Danny were going to grandmama's while mom ran a couple of errands. Who like going to their grandmoms? Raise your hand. Well, grandma was sitting in her favorite chair looking at picture albums when Bobby and Danny arrived. They threw their coats on the, co on the couch and they ran to sit next to her. It was fun to see pictures of cousins and aunts and uncles. Grandmama had pictures of each of them when they were babies. They look so different now. Who is this? Asked Danny. Well, that's granddaddy, answered grandmama. You boys never got to know him. He died just before Bobby was born. It's too bad. He never got to enjoy you boys. He would have been so proud of you. So grandma, she seemed a little sad. Danny, I was named after granddaddy, Bobby said. His name was Robert. He was glad he had this special connection to his granddaddy. That's right, Bobby, responded grandmama. I remember when you were born. I had been so sad, I went to the hospital to see you. You look so cute lying there in your little bassinet. Your fingers and toes were so tiny. You were sleeping so peacefully. She reached over and gave him a special hug. Who likes receiving hugs from their grandma? Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. Okay, she continued, grandma continued. Then your dad and mom told me they had decided to name you after granddaddy. That was so special. I wasn't sad anymore. And to think that today you are seven years old. Who's seven? Who's seven? Anyone here seven years old? Okay. She said, what a big boy you are. You're getting to be. She pointed to an envelope sitting on a mantle with all the family pictures. There's a special card for you. Bobby took it down to open it. Inside was a funny pop-out clown holding seven colorful balloons and a big sign that read, Happy Birthday! And there were ten new $1 bills. Grandmama suggested, I thought you could pick out a special gift for yourself at the toy store. Bobby ran over to her and gave her a big hug. Thank you, Grandmama. I love you so much. I love you too, she said. Happy birthday. She added, you know, whenever I get money, I set some aside to give to Jesus. Since he owns everything, even my money, I want to thank him for his goodness to me. I read in the Bible about thankful people who decided to give one-tenth or a tithe to Jesus because they love him. She picked up her Bible. Here's one Jacob. And she read, of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. And that's found in the Bible in Genesis 28, 22. So Bobby, he sat quietly for a minute. You know, I love Jesus too. And I want to thank him for his love. Here is a dollar, a tenth, a tithe for Jesus. 
You can put it in here, offered Grandmommy. She opened the drawer of the end table and she pulled out an envelope like this. You guys seen this, right? Yeah, what do you see this? Who can tell me where you've seen this? Hmm? Do you recognize that? What are this? Okay, that's what we're gonna talk about. Okay, so she pulled out, out of the drawer of the end table and pulled out an envelope. And, and Bobby has said he has seen the, this, this envelope in church. His dad was a deacon and he and Danny had helped put them in the rack on the back of the pews. She said, put your name here on the outside and then put in the offering plate at church, she instructed. So Bobby was feeling quite grown up. He was glad he could tithe his very own money. So do you know that everything belongs to who? Belongs to God, right? And can we give, can we show our love to Jesus by giving him how much? We can give him a tenth of what we have. So if someone gives you a birthday present, and if it's money, would you like to share that with Jesus? Yes? I see one head shaking, but I won't say anything. But that's okay, because there's only one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, we have eleven children. But that's kind of how life is, because we have adults like that, too. But you know what? I just want you to, re to remember that whatever you have, God gives it to you, and we should show our love and, sh and share with Jesus what it is that he's given us. So we just show him how much we love and, and, and thank him. So I need to have two to, to pray. Who would like to pray? I want you to pray. And I need a girl. Um, I want you to pray. Raquel. I mean, not Raquel. Um, Amaya. Amaya. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. I need ladies first. Jeremy, Father, you help us. You help us stay connected. You help us bless you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Daddy, Father, thank you for the stay. Help that we be good. Help that we learn and we be kind and we be respectful to God. And help that we share and be nice to God and one another. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You you guys got it. Praise God. Now return to your seat and have a blessed Sabbath. Morning, happy Sabbath. It is a privilege this morning that um, we have passed uh, Gillen with us this morning. He uh, comes to us all the way from Andrews, where he's getting his MDiv. But he's really from across the pond. He's born in London, England. Um, Pastor preached his first message when he was 11 years old. I think Goshen is privileged this morning to have him bring the word to us. Uh, God has been preparing him for this day. And so what he has prepared for us this day Pastor Gillen will give us the message right after the song of meditation. Thank you.
if you know that my hope is built on nothing less, why don't you just say amen? I don't think you heard me. If you really believe that your hope is built on nothing less, just say amen. Yes, the solid. Why don't you sing with us? Oh, lover. Yes. Why don't you put your hands together? Why don't you put your hands together? Because it's only on Christ that we find hope. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. The psalmist says that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make the boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. It says, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Delivered me from all of my fears. Can I get some more volume on this, please? Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord today, saints? No, 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 no. You guys don't seem too happy. Are you really happy to be in the house of the Lord today, saints? I don't know about you, but when I look around on what's going on in the news, every Sabbath, every time I wake up, I am just so blessed to, to have breath in my lungs. Am I the only one? You see, there were some folks back in Paris that went to a theater one night and they didn't make it back home. There were some folks in California that started this week but didn't live to see another Sabbath day. There were some folks in Syria that went to sleep and woke up motherless and woke up brotherless and woke up fatherless. And now God has saw it fit that you are here today. If that is not it, you ought to get up out your feet. Get up out your seat and bless the Lord today. Bless him because he is worthy of all of our praise. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. It could have been you that the police targeted. It could have been your son. It could have been you out, out there in California. But God said, I ain't finished with you yet. If that is not enough to give God thanks, I don't know what is. The psalmist said, let everything. Uh, I didn't say some things. He said, let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. That if there's breath in your lungs, uh, if you're inhaling and you're exhaling, uh, if you're sitting there and you're looking at me, you ought to praise God. Please be seated. Man, the truth be told, we are living in some perilous times. And if Paris, Syria, or California wasn't enough for you. It is time to wake up, church family. We are living in perilous times. Uh, today, I just want to thank um, Pastor Fraser. Um, he's a little bit sick today, but I just want to... Can, can we just give him a round or clap our hands for the, for the pastor and the leadership here? He is a great man, and I just thank him for giving me this opportunity uh, to, 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 to share with you the message that God has uh, given us today. Today, I don't want to take too long, but I really want you to just uh, grab your Bibles and go over to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. Um, and we're going we're gonna to read, say, from um, verses 29 to, to 32. When you found it, just say, I've got it. 
Not I've got it, I've got it. <laughs> I've got it. That is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 29 through to 32. When you have it, say, I've got it, preacher. Okay, are you with me? Okay, and the Bible says, and David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul. And he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Today I want to talk on the subject facing giants. Face sin giants. I just want you to quickly turn to your neighbor on the left side and say, neighbor. Now say it like you really mean it. Say, neighbor. It may not be now. It may be later. But giants is on its way. I don't think that neighbor was listening to you. So turn to your other neighbor and say, other neighbor. Oh, other neighbor. It may not be now. Maybe later, but it's coming. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, the truth is I am undeserving to stand before your people today. Lord, I pray that I may decrease and you will increase. Lord, I pray that I will uh, come out of the way so that your people, your children can hear a word from you. Lord, empty me so that the Holy Spirit can, can embody me so that a message can be preached today. Lord, I pray that when we leave this place, we can truly say that we have had an encounter with Jesus. Lord, this is not about me, but this is about you. So, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. All these things I ask in your name. Amen. I am sure that we have heard this story preached many times before. This story uh, may have been taught many times when you were uh, in Sabbath school. This story, uh, you may not even need to be a Christian to have heard about this story of David and Goliath. The truth be told, I want to really speak on the subject of facing giants. And the truth be told is that sometime in our life, there is going to be a time when we are going to face giants. You see, if the truth be told, if we are honest with ourselves, we may have encountered some already. We have some to come on its way. You see, giants are things that, 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 that we just cannot avoid. We cannot run away from, but we have to overcome. Somebody say overcome. And we, you, I have some things, some giants, some predicaments, some situations that that, that, that we see that may may look bigger than us. We have some giants to face. You know what giant you are dealing with. I know what giant I am dealing with. But we are all today in the house of the Lord dealing with some giants in our life. Uh, We we are picked up in the story in 1 Samuel down in chapter 37. We pick up the story. We we see the Philistines. The Philistines, uh, Goshen, was originally from the islands off the Greek coast. When the book of Samuel began, the Philistine had already controlled the coastal regions and now they begin to drive inland to gain areas that did not belong to them but rather belong to Israel. Notice, a uh, church family, that the enemy of God wanted to grant themselves access to areas that did not belong to them. 
Now in their attempts to gain greater parts of Judah, the Philistine now came head to head with Israel. And in order to avoid massive bloodshed, each side will send in their best warrior to fight on behalf of the army and behalf of the whole nation. This warrior had to be an expert in the art of combat because he had the whole nation the fate of the whole nation in his hands. So the Bible says, and, and it says that from the Philistine uh, uh, army, they sent in a man called uh, Goliath, Goliath of Gath. And when we read in verses 4, 3 to 11, the Bible lets us know that he is a champion and he is over nine foot tall. He is big. He is tall. He is strong. He is mighty. He is the epitome of a great warrior. This giant, the mighty man, was waiting. The Bible says this mighty man, he was waiting in the valley of Elah, waiting for his opponent. And I only really got three points to, 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 to tell you today. And I really want to bring this to your attention. What we need to know, that all the fighting was done in the valley. Somebody say valley. You see, the Philistines will be encamped, uh, our Goshen, on one side. And the Israelites will be encamped on the other side. And when they were ready to fight, they would go into the valley to fight. Notice that in order for David to fight his giant, David had to go in to the valley of Elah. You see, what you've got to understand with this is that sometimes we do not face giants on our mountaintops, but we face giants in our valleys. Do I have a witness in this building? You see, as I begin to think about David going uh, into some valley, I begin to compare this with our spiritual battle. You see, we are in a spiritual warfare between faith and fear. And in our spiritual life, we got to understand that it is those battles in the valley that really shapes who we are and who we are to become. Uh, can I pull it to you this way? Sometimes we think that this Christian life is a bed of roses. We have a view that as Christians, we're always going to live this mountaintop experience. Can I be real in this place? You see, we have, uh, 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 we have this perception that life is always going to be good as a Christian. Well, I have news for somebody today. This Christian life is not only about the good times, but, some, but it's more about those bad times as well. You see, you see, you see, I've been through some valleys and I have learned more from my valleys than I have learned from my mountaintop experiences. It is in those battles, in those valleys that builds your character, that defines who you are. Help me, Holy Ghost, to preach this. Because we've been full to think that Christianity is all about the good times. But it's in those valleys that shapes you, that makes you. Ah, I have discovered, church family, that, 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 that er I used to think that everything bad or, or negative in my life comes from the devil. But today I'm going to tell you sometimes God directs some things. In our lives, by no mistake, but on purpose. God directs some things in our life that is not necessarily what we want, but what we need. You see, sometimes God brings us to some valleys. We have to go through some heartache and pain. Is there any Christians in this building? We have to go through some sunshine, some stormy rains. We have to go through some make or break points. We have to be at our guttermost. We have to reach rock bottom. I have discovered that God brings us to this point, not to destroy our faith, but to develop our faith, to improve us, to mold us to help us to test us God does not bring you there to break you but he wants to make you ah and God brought you to it and he will bring you through it 
You see, that is why the Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. If you never had any valleys in your life, then you wouldn't know how powerful God is. If you never had anything wrong in your life, you wouldn't know God wouldn't have got the glory that he deserved. Am I talking to anybody in this building? But, but unfortunately, we have some Christians, some types of Christians who only have faith in God when times are good. Only have faith in God when bills have been paid. Only have faith in God when your cupboards are full, when your marriage is going great, when there is a uh, gas in your tank, when you're getting those good grades. But good grades, true faith is built in your valley. That's why I've learned to have faith in God in my valley. Even when life isn't going good. Even when marriages ain't functioning properly. Even when you don't get the grace that you thought you deserve. Even when there seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel. I have learned to have faith in God. Even when things ain't going my way. When bills have not been paid. When I've lost my job. When I have lost some loved one. It is in those times. Uh, when you do not feel like praising that you ought to praise. Now, can I be real today? Can I be real today? You see, it's in those moments when you don't feel like, 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 like praising that you ought to praise. You know, it's easier said than done. I know that. I know that. It's easier said than done. But it's those battles in those valleys that really shape you. It's all good and well singing hallelujah in church when your life is good. It's all good and well saying hallelujah. I love the Lord when he's giving you everything that you've asked for. Oh gosh, can I preach today? It's all good saying amen when he's provided for you. But can you say amen when he does not? Can you say amen when he's not silent? Uh, do I have any witnesses in this building? Ah, uh, I've learned that when you don't feel like praising, you ought to praise. When you don't feel like coming to church, you ought to come. When you don't feel like smiling, you ought to smile. When you don't feel like clapping your hands, you ought to clap your hands. And when you don't feel like praying, that's when you ought to pray. Because sometimes Christianity is not about what you feel like, but what you know is best for you. Ah. Ah, uh, LNG White says, when we feel that we have sinned and we cannot pray, it is, in, it is then the time to pray. If only we just get that. It's not about what you feel, but it's about what you know is best for you. We ought to be like Job, who lost his possession, who lost his land, who lost his friends, who lost his family, who, who, who like Job can declare that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh, but blessed be the name of the Lord. We can say amen when God gives, but can we say amen when he takes? We question God when he takes. Where is God when I'm in my valley? You weren't saying that when God was providing for you. Ah, the Bible says that he is in some valleys. Ah, the Bible says that he has to go down into the valley of Elah to fight his giant. Those times when you are not feeling like to fight. The Bible says that David goes... He, the, the, the fighting is done into, in the valley of Elah. So we understand that Goliath is waiting in the valley. But nobody in the Israelite army wants to go up against this giant. When the enemy of God hears about this proposition, none of them want to go and fight. When the people in the army of God sees Goliath in the valley, the Bible says that they are afraid. 
You see, but when David comes and surveys the scene, this is where it gets interesting. No, this is David before he has become famous. This is David before he has become king. This is David before he wrote all those amazing psalms. This is David before he slept with the sheep. This is David as a shepherd's boy. This is David as a nobody. The only thing that scripture tells us is that David is the son of Jess. He is but a shepherd's boy. The Bible says that he went to go and deliver food to his brothers. The Bible says, I mean, he just read, it says, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart and um, heart. Your servant will go and fight for you, for him. But verse 33, we didn't read that, says, And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. David said David is willing to go and fight. David is willing to fight. But Saul turns around and says, uh, you are just a little boy. You are a youth. You ain't old enough to fight Goliath. You see, what's funny about this story is that no other Israelite wanted to fight. What's funny about this story is that the moment that David stood up to fight Goliath, Saul turns around and tells him that you are but a boy. This ain't the point I'm making, but I want to chuck it in there. When you start doing things that other people should be doing, that's when the problem starts. You see, they came dressed to fight. They looked apart, the but they did not want to fight. They were soldiers, dressed, but they didn't want to fight. But David steps up, and the first thing David hear is what? Discouragement. Now, my second point is this. Discouragement is the key to motivation. You see, even though Saul said to David, even though what Saul said to David, it did not stop David from doing what God had called him to do. You see, folks, can I share with you something? You see, the 21 years that I have been living on this earth, I have learned that every time you do something good, people will always discourage you. You see, the moment you allow God to take the wheel in your life and use you for him, that's when folks are going to speak out against you. Dare you be quiet. Dare you sit down in your mess and they won't say nothing. But as soon as you begin to get your life right, that's when folks will begin to discourage you. Ah, everything's cool, but when you want to change your life, that's when people's real colors will come out. I came here to let somebody know this one uh, principle that I'm trying to break down. You see, you see, you see, discouragement is always going to happen. It's inevitable, but it's how you deal with it, what you do with it, that makes the difference. If you're with me, say amen. Okay, so let me tell you this story. I was many, 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 many years ago, many years ago, I was attending school. I'm not, we, we have this thing called secondary school in England, which is basically high school over here. So I was um, I'm in school and, and at uh, a certain uh, uh, year in school, um, you have to take some exams. We call it GCSEs. So I was taking these GCSEs and um, I was uh, studying for that. Um, 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 I was, you know, doing the, the, all the different subjects. And um, one of my worst subjects was this thing called English. Man, I mean, I, give me a mass formula and I will do it, but give me English, I can't do it. Man, I may be from England, but English is not for me. <laughs> so um, I'm in this class and I'm studying and, and in, in, in England, they, they, they break you down into different sets. So if you're very good, you go to the top set. You have that, right? If you're not so good, you're kind of down the, the, to the bottom set. 
So church family, I was getting closer to my exams. It was getting closer uh, to my exams. And, and, and I began to study. And I was in a top set. But I didn't know how, what I was doing there. I was in a top set there with all the, the smart kids, with all the experts. I was in a top set. And then as soon as my exams were coming around, my teacher pulled me aside and says, Hey, Warren, we're going to have to drop you down. Warren, you know, you, you're not good enough to be in here. He said, Warren, this is for the smart kids. And, and, and we, we, we're, we're, gonna, we're doing some shuffling. You know how they, they do. We want to sound nice. We're just doing some reorganization. And we're going to move you down. Man, church family. I went home, I was thinking about it all day. She didn't just drop me to the second set, she dropped me to the third set. And you know the class when all the other kids, they don't want to learn. She dropped me down, church family. So, so I went home and, 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 and I couldn't tell my mother. I couldn't tell my mother. My mother is a Jamaican lady. You know any Jamaicans in here? No, my mother is a Caribbean. I couldn't tell her that I'm dropping classes. You crazy? Man, church family, I, I went home that time I did it. I could not tell my mother. So, you know, I went into my room. Ah, I begin to, as, as it, the exams begin to get closer, I begin to uh, uh, get out my textbooks. I begin to uh, uh, get out all of my revision guys, my study guys, and I begin to study, study, study. Church family, I made up in my mind that I wasn't going to allow what the teacher said about me, the, the discouragement that she sent my way to stop me from being who I can be. So I got out my books, I began to study. Study. I began to study hard and I took that exam and the results they came and, 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 and I took my sheet of paper out and I looked at that results church family and, and, and to my surprise uh, there was an A written by my name. Uh, you guys, you guys don't know what I'm talking about right now. You see, because she discouraged me and I could have, I could have complained about that my whole life. Uh, but sometimes what we got to do, we got to allow discouragement to be the key to our motivation. We can't allow people to keep you from being who God told you to be. We can't allow folks to stop you from doing the, being, doing what God has ordained you to do ah quit complaining folks are always going to discourage you they're always going to tell you that you're too big you're too short, you're too dumb you're too smart, you're too fat you're too slim they're always going to tell you that you're too pretty you're too ugly, they're always going to tell you that but it's how you deal with it it is what you do with that that makes the difference Ah, I've learned in my 21 years uh, that I've learned that sometimes uh, the Genesis say that what they fought for evil against me, God meant it for good. Sometimes you want to use the evil as a motivation, as the pedestal, as your key to motivation. I've learned just to tell myself that I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can be what God says I can be. You may call me nothing, but God calls me something. You may call me ugly, but God says I am a child of a king. I am a royal priesthood. I am above and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. I am a child of a king. Don't limit me when God has not limited me. Don't allow discouragement to be, to be your end. Folks are always going to discourage you, church family. They're always going to find something wrong in what you do. But what you do with that makes the difference. If you've got it, say amen. amen. If you have it, say amen. Ah, uh, so, so Saul... 
So now David, he, he overcomes his dis discouragement. Saul, uh, 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 he overcomes his discouragement. And the Bible says that, that Saul agrees. <laughs> Saul agrees to, 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 to um, let him fight. But Saul says, in order for you to fight, you're going to have to fight in my armor. Uh-oh. That just went over your head. Saul said, David, in order for you to fight... You're going to have to do it in my armor. Okay. David put it on and he took it off. Okay. David said, in other words, what Saul was saying, <laughs> what Saul was saying is that, David, you're going to have to fight your battles in my armor. In other words, you, listen to me church folks, you cannot fight your own battles in somebody else's armor. You cannot fight your battle in somebody else's armor. It just don't work. You see, David, Saul had, had, had fought, 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 Saul had won many battles in his armor. Uh oh, Saul had killed many nations, many people in the armor that he was using. There was nothing wrong with Saul's armor, but Saul's armor is for Saul. David's armor is for David. And sometimes we as young people, sometimes we as Christian folk, we like to base our Christian life based upon other people's experiences. We like to use our battles, we like to use other people's armor for our battles. But right here, David is saying, Saul, I, 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 I'm going to try it on, but this is your armor. I'm going to need my own armor. I'm going to need those things that I've tried, those things that I've tested. Ah. You see, the problem with, with many of us is that we just grow up Living our life in other people's armor. Living our life in our mother's armor. Living our life in our pastor's armor, our elder's armor. We grow up living our life in other people's armor. That when it comes to fighting our own giants, we don't know what to do. But can I tell you something? When you're going through your own giant, it's going to be you and your giant alone. You're going to have to sort out your own, work out your own salvation. Sort out your own armor. There was nothing wrong with Saul's armor. Well, it just worked for David. Ah, oh, and let me just, let me take my seat real soon. But the last point that I want to find is down here. You see, you see, you see David, he takes off uh, Saul's armor. He puts on Saul's armor. And, and then the Bible says that. And that, what did the Bible say? It says, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. You see, when we are facing our giants, third point, when we are facing our giants we got to get God's perspective on our situations somebody say get God's perspective we ought to know who we are fighting for and whose army we are in you see what I like about David is David knew whom he was fighting for you see David knew that the battle he was fighting was not his battle but it was the Lord's battle he was fighting in the Lord's army. Notice David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defied the army of the living God? Notice that David didn't say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defied me? It was not David's battle. You see, I'm sure if this was David's battle, he maybe wouldn't have stepped up to the plate. But instead, David was looking at Goliath from God's angle. I like to call it a God's eye view. Not from where we are standing, but from where God is sitting. This battle that we are fighting, we are in a spiritual warfare. This battle is the Lord's battle. Oh, Y'all don't get it. Y'all not getting it. Let me tell this story. You see, uh, many, last year, I think two years ago, sorry, I went to a place called New York City. 
You see, and when I went to a place called New York City, uh, I, I just wanted to be this touristy kind of guy. I just wanted to, you know, go walk around everywhere, see everything, see all the buildings and all the sights that New York City had to offer. I'm just that kind of guy. You see, so I, I went walking about and somebody said that I should uh, go to the Statue of Liberty. So, so I saw the Statue of Liberty and somebody said I should go and see the Empire State Building. So I went to the Empire State Building from ground zero. I looked up and the Empire State Building was so huge, church family. You see, somebody said I should go to the New World Trade Center, ground zero. And I went down. Somebody said I should go see uh, the Chrysler Building and I went to go see the Chrysler building. But church family, uh, 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 my trip had come to an end and, and, I, and, and I got ready to go. I, I boarded the plane and I sat back in my seat and as the plane took off and, and the coast of New York was disappearing, this big apple that I once thought was big wasn't so big after all. If you're with me, just say amen. You see, church family, I was seeing New York from ground zero. I was seeing New York from street level. But now that I am sitting on my plane, now that I am buckling my seatbelt and I'm sitting back on my American airline flight, I looked out of the window and the Statue of Liberty, it didn't look that big. The Chrysler building, it didn't look that big. The Empire State Building, it did not look that big. The World Trade Center, it did not look that big. You see, the size of New York did not change but it was the angle <laughs> that I was looking at it that changed. Do I have any witnesses in this building? New York did not change uh, but where I was viewing New York was the difference uh, and sometimes we got to take a different kind of look to our giants, uh, a different kind of look to our situations. We got to look uh, from a God's eye view uh, because what's hard for us, it ain't hard for God. God, uh, not from where we are standing, but from where God is sitting. Ah, uh, we got to get a God's eye on our life. It's not about how big your situation is. To you, it may look big, but God is looking at it from a different angle. God, get God's perspective on our life. Get God's perspective on our situation, on our giants. Ah, oh, so let me, let, let, me, let me wrap this up. So, so here we, 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 we are. I could just pitch up the scenes in my head. David running down into the valley to, to, to fight Goliath. And, and, and as he gets close to Goliath, he... He reached into his bag and he grabbed one of his stones. Now, Goliath, he was feeling so confident that he, he just lifts his helmet up. David realized that sometimes bigger doesn't always mean better. You see, he grabbed the stone out of his bag and he put it in a sling and he hurled that stone at Goliath. But I believe that it was, it was by divine intervention that David only needed one stone. I believe that it was God that directed directed that stone to land on the forehead of Goliath uh, and to strike that killer bro. So we see it. So what does David do? The almighty Goliath is down. But David takes it a step further to ensure that Goliath is down and he's staying down. So he goes over to Goliath and he pulls out uh, Goliath's own sword to land the final blow and right there and then David takes his own stall, his own sword and does what he needs to do. David needed to show that Goliath is not bigger than God. That Goliath was down and he is staying down. Perhaps if David left him after he had hit the stone on him, then perhaps a doctor or a physician could have came along and healed him. But David said, no, 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 no. I'm not taking any chances with you because my God is bigger than you and bigger than all your problems. So David says, I want to say goodbye once and for all. So he does that, and when the enemy of God sees this, the enemy of God does not stick to the deal, but they begin to run. You see, when you make deals with the devil, he will never stick to the deal. He all, there is always a catch in anything that he promises, for the wages of sin is what? Okay, so now David had faced his giant. You see, so this boy, 
his brother told him that he could not fight. Saul discouraged him. He had no fighting experience. He had no armor. Saul called him a boy. This little shepherd's boy, this little nobody who everybody wrote off, this guy that came from nowhere, from out of the odds, this kid from Bethlehem defeated this Goliath. But can I tell you, Gosham Church, before I take my seat, that 2,000 years later, there was another man that came from Bethlehem. You see, that came, he also came from the bloodline of David, and he had to face some giants, Elder. It wasn't just for the Israelites, but he faced some giants for the whole world. Matthew 1.1 1, 1 tells us that this man is the son of David. You see, church family, David had some stones but we have a cornerstone ah uh, don't you believe me <laughs> don't you believe me didn't Isaiah say that I lay in Zion uh, for a foundation a stone a, a tri stone a precious cornerstone and a sure foundation uh, didn't Paul write in Ephesians that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone didn't Acts say that he is the stone uh, that the builders rejected that which became a cornerstone Stone. But not only did it, was he a cornerstone, but he was also our rock. Uh, you don't believe me? You don't believe me? The Lord is my rock, Psalm says, my fortress, my deliverer. He is my rock of my salvation. He is my rock and my redeemer. David only had but a stone, uh, but we have a cornerstone and we have a rock. Uh, and uh, one day a giant, uh, one day a giant appeared to him in the form of the devil who tried to tempt him he said if you are the son of man then you could change these stones into bread then he took him to the highest point you know this story he took him to above the holy city but God rebuked him and said you do not put the Lord under the test and then oh he had another giant church family and that was sitting at the top of Mount Calvary and the Bible says uh, and the Bible says that in the garden of Gethsemane, he had this giant and, and the pressure was becoming so large that he said, Lord, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. If that is not a giant, then I don't know what is. Sometimes our biggest giants is our will because we don't want to yield. But God said, not my will, but your will be done. You see, church family, uh, they ridiculed him. They told him that kings don't come from his part of town. They spat upon him. They despised him. They rejected him. They could not find him guilty, yet they nailed him on the cross. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They beat him from side to side. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And the Bible said, and early uh, Sunday morning uh, the Bible said early uh, Sunday morning uh, there was a great earthquake uh, oh Jesus uh, is our rock uh, and it's on Christ uh, I said on Christ uh, that solid rock I stand uh, all of the ground uh, is sinking sand uh, uh, he shed his his blood for you. Uh, he was whipped from side to side. Uh, the Bible said that he was wounded. <laughs> For my transgression, uh, he was bruised uh, for my iniquity. Uh, by his stripes, uh, by his stripes, uh, I am healed. Uh, oh, the blood uh, that Jesus shed for me. Uh, uh, you don't believe it. Way back uh, on Calvary, uh, the blood uh, that will never, never said never lose its power 
for it reaches uh, to the highest mountains uh, and it flows uh, to the lowest valley. The blood, the blood, I said the blood, I said the blood, uh, it will never lose uh, its power. There is a fountain uh, filled with blood. If you believe it, stand with me. Uh, drawn from uh, Emmanuel's vein uh, and the sinners uh, been plunged beneath that flood. Uh, lose all. I said lose all. Their guilty stains. Uh, oh, some through the waters, uh, some through the flood, uh, some through great fire, uh, but all, uh, I said, all through the blood, uh, the blood, the blood. Yes, the lily of the valley. He had some giants to face. Yes, the bright and morning star. He has some giants to face. Yes, the rose of Sharon. He has some giants to face. Yes, the fairest of 10,000. He had some giant to face. Yes, he did. But I'm glad to say that he overcame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because Christ overcame, <laughs> I am an overcomer. Yes, if Christ had some giants in, our, in his life, then who are we to think that we ain't going to get any in ours? If the devil tempt Jesus, then why would he not tempt you? Uh, because Jesus overcame, I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. So my giants that I'm going through in my life, Jesus had already done, been there, brought the t-shirt, and he have overcame. Is there anybody that, that has some giants in their life that wants to meet me down here as we pray about our giants? Is there anybody that wants, me, wants to meet me down here as we seek God so that he can deal with our giants? Now, we all have some things that we ought to deal with. But I want to tell you this one quick thing real quick. You see, in, chap in the chapter before, Samuel had went out looking for a king and had anointed David to be the king already. So in other words, David was going into this fight knowing that he wasn't going to die because the prophecy hadn't been fulfilled. That Samuel said that David, I'm, anoint, I'm, I'm going to anoint you king. When he was fighting Goliath, he, ha, he wasn't on a king yet. So David went into that battle, went into that fight already knowing that it was going to be a good fight. And I just want to leave you all with that encouragement that the battle that we are fighting... It is the Lord's battle. God ain't finished with you yet. God ain't finished with you yet. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Jesus, your, your children are, are, are here at the front. And Lord, the truth is we all going through some things in our lives. Lord, and we know that we cannot do these things on our own. We know that it's only through you, only by leaning on your everlasting arms that we are going to make it over. Lord, and right now we just come just to seek you. 
Because, Lord, the truth is sometimes it's easy to try and fight by ourselves. It's easy to try and fight on our own uh, our strength. But, Lord, you said our weakness is made strong. Lord, when I'm weak, you are strong. Lord, we know that there is no other way that we can overcome if we just, we just ought to lean on you, Lord. Lord, you let us know that you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. And some of your children in this building may be in some trouble right now. Some of your children may be in some valley moments. Uh, some of your children may be discouraged right now. Some of your children may be looking at their giants as if it is too big for you. Uh, but right now, Lord, I'm here to declare that you said uh, that your grace is is sufficient enough oh Lord you know sometimes it's easy to come to church and and to say Lord I trust you but Lord when we leave this place let us leave this place with the assurance that you are able that is your battle that you ain't finished with us yet oh Lord you are the beginning and the end you know and you see before we know and see. Lord, you have not finished with us. So right now, even though our situa situation may be overpowering us right now, we know and we cling to your promise. We cling to all those things. You, we cling to the promise that we are more than conquerors. We cling to the promise that there is no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. We cling to the promise that weeping may uh, endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Lord, joy comes in the morning. Lord, thank you for the giants that you are going to slay. Thank you for those things that you are going to uh, beat down for us. Lord, thank you. All these things I ask in your name. Amen. Please take a seat. What song are you playing? Do you know the song, The Blood That Jesus Shed For Me? Can we sing that song? I think I'm going to need some help. We have the words on the screen. That Jesus shed for me. I'll sing it like a minute. Always back home on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from death, it will never. His power for it reaches. For it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, and it flows. And it flows to the lowest valley. Valley, or oh, the blood that gives me strength from day. Ah, it will never. It will. Let's sing that one more time. For it reaches. Is power. Ah, uh, singing like you mean it. 
for it reaches, for it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the Lord, yes. Finally, the blood, hallelujah, that gives me strength from day, from day to day. It will never it's That was Pastor from across the pond. Sure, that was a good message. The request now is that we take the message and pray that it falls on good soil, that it may bear forth much fruit. Amen. Um, one small request. Um, immediately after the service, and we are ushered out. I would like to meet with board members. Board members right here. It will be very brief after we ushered out if I could meet with the board members right here, amen? And then right after stewardship, uh, Ella uh, will come with a brief uh, highlight, amen? Um, it's time for the offering. Um, this, this is the time of the season when everyone gets into the shopping and the buying and the giving of gift, just a brief reminder, don't forget and don't spend what belongs to the Lord, amen? What belongs to the Lord still comes to the house of worship, amen? Thank you.
Father in heaven, we just pause to thank you for that which you have blessed us with. Father, we ask that you will bless it. May it go forward to the finishing of your work. Bless those who have returned. Continue to have mercy on those who don't. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, one more thing before we uh, our benediction, I just want to remind you guys of what the pastor talked about earlier today, uh, a spiritual life inventory. We got to complete this. Uh, we got a high percentage of the members to complete this. So we just want to remind you to pick up one from the ushers before you leave. Uh, remember, no name on it. Just put your age on it. And uh, 10 means you definitely agree with what, with what it said. Okay. Thank you. Bear with me a little while longer. I wanted to share some words from Paul. I love him because he went through so much and he learned so much by his mistakes. Um, I wanted to read something, if you can bear with me, from Romans 12. Behave like a Christian. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging. In diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing steadfastly in in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice yes. and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Right. If he is thirsty, give yes. him a drink. Yes, For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Amen. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Now let's stand for the benediction. I thought those were words of direction Amen. from our instruction book. Amen. That after that sermon about the giants, we know where to find the help we need to fight those giants. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's bow our heads. Dear kind and merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for this message that we have received today. Lord, let us depart from this place, but not from your presence that our temples will be cleansed by your spirit. Return us here to this same place again, Lord, to worship and to honor your name. Go with us in each day as we walk in your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Okay, just uh, quickly before we leave, um, every year around